Zimbabwe cash crisis we worse. about Venezuela once again. Systemic important banks. They removed the one that they were going to call monetary Hey there, hope all is well. Back at you today with some more TV news updates. And as you can tell from today's title, we're talking about the global debt and setting the all-time new highs of $233 trillion in counting. And never before in human history or recorded human history have we been in so much debt with there being no way whatsoever of governments, corporations, financial institutions being able to actually live up to the promises of repaying this debt. And so what I want to do today is cover a couple different articles with you, just kind of highlighting how the debt is broken down from the corporate to the, the governments to the central banks and you name it. And before I dive into those articles, as always, if you're new to RTD, I want to encourage you to click the subscribe button for more RTD news updates as well as interviews and live talks. And also, if you're new to RTD, I want to encourage you to visit me on steamit.com where I share a lot of my videos that I do here as well as articles throughout the day to give you an idea of what's going on in the news outside of these videos here where I tend to cover maybe one or two different subjects at a time. But yet at steamit.com, if you follow me there, you get a chance to read about more articles and more things happening around the world on that platform there. So without further ado, let's dive into today's articles. And as always, I want to encourage you to take the time to read some of these things for yourself, dive a little bit deeper so that you yourself can get a better understanding of what all this means and how at the end of the day, these notes right here above my shoulder, the weight, the yen, the pound, the sterling, the dollar, you name them. They're all central bank assets lent out to governments and expected to be repaid back with interest. And not many people are aware of the fact that these notes are obligations in and of themselves that the governments are responsible for. And it so happens to be that these are national currencies that we base our life upon, as well as our investments and everything like that. So it's something worth thinking about as we move through these articles here. First one here is from CNBC and it says, global debt levels hit 233 trillion, a record high in Q3 of 2017. The next one here is the same thing, but it gives a different spin. And more importantly, during this uh, video commentary here, the people listed here kind of give a, a different spin upon idea how we're at all time highs in debt. The Federal Reserve is looking to tighten while they're not hitting their targets. And they kind of hint to the fact of what's more important nowadays. And it has to do with what people should diversify into. So we'll get into that. The next one here is a list of countries by uh, external debt. So we'll go through that briefly. And then here's another breakdown of something of the same format, but yeah, a little bit more details. And then the next one is the actual visual aid of 63 trillion of world debt in one visualization. And then at the very end, as always, I'll share my thoughts and I'll give you a little take on how and what this all means for you and I. So let's dive into the very first one. So here we have this article just came out as a couple of hours ago. And it so has the idea that, you know, total debt rose by 16 trillion in third quarter compared to the end of 2016. It says, but debt ratio to global gross domestic product fell for the fourth quarter in a row as the world economy expands. So all this debt is leading to a little bit of productivity, but at the end of the day, not enough productivity to repay this debt. So I'll skim through a little bit and give you what's on the surface. It says global debt soared to a record high of 233 trillion. Financial industry bodies said while total debt has risen by 16 trillion in the third quarter compared to end of 2016, debt ratio to GDP falling for the fourth quarter in a row as the world economy expanded. Said it was referring to total debt incurred by household, government, financial and non-financial corporate sector. So just to give you an idea of what they're referring to, it covers more than just uh, the government debt. It covers all debt in, in total, which basically says that every single of these denominated issued currencies tie into that debt. And so you have everything from uh, investments, you have everything from the corporate debts that uh, and the bonds and you have the municipals, you have every single form of debt whatsoever that's been issued on this planet is all tied into this $233 trillion. And it's all issued in these denominations right here of the currencies that are more so considered the big dogs out of all the fiat currencies. So to go a little further, it says a combination of factors, including synchronized above potential global growth, Rising inflation, China, Turkey, and efforts, the stabilizing buildup of debt in China and Canada have all contributed to the decline. It says the United Nations calculates the global population is 7.6 billion people, suggesting the world's per capita debt is more than $30,000. So as of now, 7.6 billion people on this planet. And if you tally, tally all that debt to allocate it out to each and every person on this planet, it would equal roughly $30,000 that we're all linked to in some form or fashion. And it's all, and it all must be repaid, however that may come about. 
So the next one here is a list of countries by external debt. So this here focuses more so on the government debt in and of itself. And so, of course, the United States of America leads the way. This is a little bit older, but right now it's more so around 20 trillion. And so we got United Kingdom, France, Germany, pretty much all the developed nations here lead the way in, in debt owed. So the list of countries by external debt, which is a total debt and private debt owed to non-residents, repayable in internationally accepted currencies, goods or services where the public debt is money or a credit owed back to the government. Then the very next one here gives a little bit more detail and it breaks down some of that from these uh, institutions that kind of put this stuff together and it gives the same information there as far as the numbers are concerned but what's more telling and what i really wanted to hint on was the idea that uh, last year as of october if you count just what the governments what just what the leading governments owe in and of itself that's 63 trillion dollars and so it says 63 trillion of world debt in one visualization so this is from visualcapitalist.com and so give an idea of how serious this is. If you look at this entire uh, visual aid here, the United States is leading the way. And it says a share of their global debt completely is 31.8%, where China is 7.9, Japan is 18.8, Italy is 3.9, Germany is 3.8, France, United Kingdom. So it goes on and on and on. And so we have a lot of the South, uh, the, the third world countries over here, which is, you know, something in the 0.5 or 0 0.02, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So very small in comparison to the leading nations here in the bigger uh, shapes here. Then it goes down a little bit more, give you an idea of what's going on. A little bit of a breakdown. It says, if you add up all the money that national governments have borrowed, it tallies to a hefty 63 trillion. It says, the US is a prime example of debt creep. The country hasn't uh, posted an annual budget surplus since 2001. So we haven't basically lived within our means or spent within our means since 2001, according to how it's measured. It says when the federal debt was only 6.9 trillion or 54% of GDP. It says fast forward to today and the debt has ballooned to roughly 20 trillion, which is 107% of GDP, which is equal to 31% of the world's sovereign debt nominally so he give you give an idea of the breakdown of the top five debtors in on the planet with the united states japan china italy and france leading the way and so as we all know italy and france in the eu is a complete mess especially italy on the verge of complete uh sovereign default of everything they owe so that's going to be a, a fiasco when it unwinds then it go down a little further it says together uh just uh, these five countries together combined for 66 percent of the world's debt in nominal terms so just out of the, what the governments owe these five countries above tally 66 percent so that's pretty hefty so if you're interested in finding out more about that definitely check that out but what's more important here and what i really want to hint on is the idea that you know not too many people are actually aware of this subject matter of debt and how this subject matter of debt is actually tied into our national currencies. And so here we have the Federal Reserve note, which is the World Reserve currency. And so as of now, it's leading all categories as far as actual debt owed. And so not many people realize that the central bank or the Federal Reserve has brought into existence from absolutely nothing and lent money to our government with the expectation of it being repaid back with interest. So it in and of itself is a debt instrument. So the fact that we are uh, so indebted ourselves as a country, but then what's issued to us in the form of uh, money or what we work for is debt in and of itself. So these this large number above my head it actually ties into directly what you and I hold in our pockets, what you and I work for, what you and I consider our national tender. So it is what is due back. And so as of now, there's no way of being able to repay that back because money in order to exist, there has to be a debt incurred. So someone has to take out a debt to be able to repay the prior debt which is always going to keep a balance. So there'll never be an actually uh, a chance to return to zero debt or to be debt free. And so one thing worth noting is the fact that all these digits, all this debt, all these uh, fiat currencies that are no longer backed by anything, all they're intended to do is for to, to somewhat be a medium of exchange for us to actually uh, obtain the things we need such as our uh, goods and services food water clothing shelter everything's needed in order to function on this planet in order to stay alive and so what that boils down to is every every single digit every single national currency every single uh thing we call or digital dollar as uh, most of the dollars are actually in digital form but all those instruments there are designed to actually 
obtain what we actually need to live such as and I'm going to show you right here what I'm referring to every single thing we need to exist is within this periodic table here and so here you have uh, everything everything you see with your natural eye is comprised of elements that are on this periodic table here so everything we are our cars houses food um, clothing everything one form of a fashion when you put these elements together give us our uh, goods that we use when we exchange money for these things and so to keep you an, to give you an idea of how serious this is out of the, all these elements when it comes to really rethinking a dollar one thing to keep in mind is that from a monetary standpoint we have a couple things in this area right here in, the, in these metals here where between where there be silver palladium platinum gold as well as uh, copper and some of the other uh, base metals they all serve a, a very important purpose and so not only are have they been money for thousands of years but they also are elements from the earth that retain their value in and of itself just because it costs money to bring it from the ground and it costs money to refine it, to put it into the forms that we need to use it, whether it be with lighting, computer, microphones, uh, the TV screen or, a or a phone you're watching this from. And so that right there in and of itself is real money. And so all this debt, all these digits is actually chasing things that come from that periodic table. So at the end of the day, what's most uh, worth having in your possession? It'll be the things that are located on that table which is true inherent wealth that's been here ever since God made the earth and some. So anyway, just want to share my thoughts today with you on this uh, idea that the global debt hits a record. And as always, let me know your thoughts. I would love to find out uh, what you think about this, as well as if you find this informative. I want to encourage you to share this with your family and friends and loved ones so they can find out how serious this debt is and what all these digits are actually chasing, which are things located on the periodic table, which are things that you and I should be holding at the end of the day, as all this debt unravels because it is not able to be repaid. So other than that, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.